اللهم اجزه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومي ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحينا على سنته وأمتنا على ملته واحشرنا تحت لوائه وأوردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أعاذنا الله وإياكم من النار ومن عذاب النار It is in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the weather gets that hot or even more because in Arabia it gets way beyond the temperatures we see. The Prophet ﷺ used to make a prayer. He used to say, Allahumma qina adhaba jahannam wa qina min harri nari jahannam. Allahumma ameen. So today I am going to divert a bit from the Quran series, but I will be addressing a current topic that we have to we have to address, we have to see the consequences of what is going on. President Biden, a couple of days ago, announced that the monkey, uh, monkey pox has reached a level very close to being a pandemic, if not an... Uh, so, and one of the things that really drew my attention in this announcement is that the CDC and other medical sources have pointed the fact that this is much more spread if not centered around a certain community. They call it LGBT. And they say specifically men who have sexual relationship with other men. So whenever there is a topic like this that threatens our society as a whole and is threatening other societies, we need to know what does Islam say, if anything, about this issue. Because there are issues in our life that either the Quran will be talking about or the Sunnah will be talking about or both. And this is one of those issues that we need to have a perspective, a clear perspective that is consistent with Islam. But before I say anything, I want to just remark that we are not, we don't believe in animosity or discrimination against any human being because of whatever choice they have. But we strongly believe that when somebody adapts a bad habit, it's either one of two. Either it is very personal or it affects the public. In this case, this habit affects the public. It does, even though those who do not practice this kind of behavior are far away from getting infected unless they interact physically with one of those who carry this type of disease. This is very dangerous. And uh, when, when they announce that this is turning to be an international uh, pandemic, this is very serious for us because we seem to be at the peak of this pandemic starting up. And we need to turn the alarm on. We need to speak about it. We need to highlight our position as Muslims, which is not, by the way, any different from the position of people who believe in the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, there's a lot of text about this issue as there is in the Quran. The Quran makes few ayat, about five, seven ayat, mentioning al-fahisha, which this is. And uh, it does not go extensively on uh, or at all into the area of 
hating those people or hurting these people or anything like this. It just says that those who commit those behaviors, they are violating the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rules of nature. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us into males and females to have proper venue for reproductive capacity to produce children, not to adapt children. So that everyone who has a child, it is his child and it is his responsibility and it grows in a family, not between two people. And the fact that the Supreme Court has made it the law of the land uh, several months ago makes this issue very complicated to address or to handle or to resolve. Because now, if you open this subject in any public arena, uh, you will be labeled, you will be attacked, and those attacks are okay. But when they get attacked, which we do not support, it's not okay, it's illegal. But they can attack anybody, they can slander anybody, they can uh, assassinate any personality for the sake of continuing to do what they think is their right. So, I'm not going to uh, go over any extensive text. I'm going to handle just one hadith to show not only us, but the society in which we live, so that we open our eyes, because we have been in this position before. Forty years ago, we had the AIDS uh, epidemic that plagued the United States, and we spend billions of dollars of the national treasures to cover some treatment and to discover some treatment, and we barely saved those who were afflicted at the tail end of that wave. But how much do we want to spend on a few groups of people who want to live their way and deplete our treasures for their own desires. How much do we want to do that? When uh, this uh, corona pandemic started to affect everybody, the government mandated masks. Then it mandated the requirement for vaccination. And the economic impact forced our government to put about two trillion dollars just on this pandemic, the corona pandemic, just to maintain the level of deterioration of the economy so that it does not have an economic breakdown of the whole financial system. So those are not personal choices anymore. They are in the center, but at the end they affect everybody else, even those who disagree with it, they don't practice it, they don't live that lifestyle, but still, everybody pays something for any of this. So let us see what the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu says. The hadith says that uh, he talked addressing the muhajireen. He says, Ya ma'ashar al-muhajireen, khamsun idha ptuliitum bihinna, وَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَنْ تُدْرِكُوهُنَّ And he listed five issues. I'm going to read them as is. O group of muhajireen, five things that if you are put through their tests and I seek refuge for you in Allah, that you live to see them or realize them. What is the first one? The first one he says, لم تظهر أو ما فشت الفاحشة في قوم حتى يعلنوا بها إلا فشى فيهم الطاعون والأوجاع التي لم تكن في أسلافهم الذين مضوا. No community has spread and let appear and manifest itself with vice, 
sexual promiscuity except that when they announce it and proclaim it in public look at the these are two elements here they engage in promiscuous behavior a behavior that is different from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed that a, a man and a woman in a contractual agreement of marriage they can have uh, their, sat their satisfaction of their desires legally and pro probably properly according to Islam. So it says, the fahisha does not appear in a community ever until when they proclaim it publicly, except that they will be afflicted with the plague and, and the plague is a word that is used for not only the plague itself, but plague is a word that you could translate it into a pandemic or an epidemic. Epidemic is something local in one location. Pandemic is worldwide uh, disease or ailment. Except that ta'un or plague will spread. And other ailments, not only the plague, other ailments that were not were never present in their predecessors in the same community. I think this hadith applies directly to what we're talking about as it applied before to the AIDS pandemic that plagued our world for years. Then he goes on to say, وَلَمْ يَنْقُصُ الْمِكْيَالَ وَالْمِيزَانِ إِلَّا أُخِذُوا بِالسِّنِينَ وَشِدَّةِ الْمُؤْنَةِ وَجَوْرِ السُّلْطَانِ عَلَيْهِمْ And they will never cheating or unjust in whatever they practice of malpractice in the sale and purchase of commodities or anything else that they cheat their customers except that they will be taken by hard times and difficulty having their provisions, access to food, supplies. We witnessed that in the corona pandemic. And then, وَجَوْرُ sultan They will be afflicted with a governor or leader that would be unjust and unfair to the entire society. Those are serious problems. And unfortunately, this is not going to be limited to where a group of people will do something evil, then it will be limited to them. It will go to everybody around. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً protect yourself from a fitna, affliction, that will not be limited to those who transgress the lines. It will not be limited. Somebody who has this type of relationship, and then he goes back home to his wife, his wife, innocent person, she gets the disease. And then this disease, according to the CDC, the monkeypox, transfers by touching the skin. So this is as dangerous as the corona, if not more, because everybody shakes hands, everybody touches something, and so on and so forth. وَلَمْ يَمْنَعُوا زَكَاةَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ And they never stop paying the zakah, the due charity that Allah mandated on the rich to support the poor. وَلَمْ يَمْنَعُوا زَكَاةَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ إِلَّا مُنِعُوا الْقَطْرَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَلَوْ لَلْبَهَائِمِ لَمْ يُمْطَرُوا Look at the language. They will be barred from getting rain from heaven. And if it were not for the animals, the heaven would not send any water down. This is as, as bad as it can get. When an entire race, the entire humanity, is, is not getting water from heaven, where do we get water? 
ولم ينقضوا عهد الله وعهد رسوله إلا صلت الله عليهم عدوا من غيرهم and they do not break the covenant they had with Allah or with his messenger except that Allah would send enemies from outside to take part of what they have in their hands definitely this is true for all the Muslim communities around the world that we are unable to keep what Allah has given us our enemies they attack our nations and they steal the resources publicly because they have the power to do it not because it is the right thing to do but they have the power to do it and we are too weak to defend our positions and our nations and our communities unfortunately so whenever people violate their commitment and covenant they have given to Allah or his messenger except that Allah would send their enemies against them to take some of what Allah has put in their hands and we will not be able to protect it or protect ourselves against this and the fifth item here وَمَا لَمْ تَحْكُمْ أَئِمَّتُهُمْ بِكِتَابِ اللَّهِ وَيَتَخَيَّرُوا مِمَّا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ بَأْسَهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ and they would not cross the limits until they reach that their leaders will rule by any rule other than the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the book of Allah or in the sunnah of his prophet and unless they make their choices they pick their choices from the text of the Quran or the text of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa this is the freedom Allah is giving us you have the text choose from the text whatever treatment that Allah proposes to whatever ailment or problem and use it but don't go outside the text of the Quran or the text of the Sunnah to seek guidance other than what Allah has sent down to us as humans so as you see from the text of the hadith that fahisha unfair trade practice whatever the application may be and prohibiting the due of the poor to reach to the poor and violating the rules of Allah the rules of his book and the sunnah are five major plagues that have plagued not only our ummah but definitely all the world that we live in today and it's quite unfortunate to say what we all know but this is a fact that the attack on family I'm not saying Muslim family the attack on family family as humanity has known it forever a man marrying a woman and begetting children and nesting those children and raising them according to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it has been this family whether it is in the Muslim world or non-Muslim world is not only under attack it is under a demolition order to be demolished and new forms of families are coming up and marrying people or allowing people to marry younger than the set legal age that is set by the West because of whatever reasons has become punishable under UN law I'm not now talking about a specific country but soon you will see this because as we have seen the LGBT community now enjoy the constitutional support of the Supreme Court of the United States that they can marry under state law 
and states cannot bar them from being married, right? Now, I don't know when they will have the guts to come and challenge all the religious communities, Muslims, Christians, Jews, and say, you also have to marry homosexual marriage. You have to contract it. You have to accept it. And we have seen some Muslim groups who call themselves either LGBT supporters or LGBT members. So we need to push back against this trend before everything and the details of it become supported by the Supreme Court and, and then many of us will not have life here. Many of us will not have the life that we used to know up until now because now we don't have the life we used to have 20 years ago, right? And 20 years ago, we didn't have the life we used to have 40 years ago. So there is a sliding slope against which I'm raising the flag so that we have to have a role to play in pushing back alongside all the other religious communities who are doing their part, trying to push back, but they are still alone and they feel that that loneliness is a weakness. Where are we? Where is our voice against those trends that can turn our society upside down? After all, we know about Sodom and Gomorrah, as mentioned in the Old Testament, what happened to them. We know about them in the Quran, the people of Prophet Lut, who used to live this lifestyle. And we should never ignore the lesson that we should draw from those experiences. Allah did not tell us those stories to entertain us. He told us, and he says in the Quran that his sunnah will apply to anybody. His law will apply to everyone. If his law was that this community, the community of Prophet Lut, their life ended by the angels lifting up all the town up in heaven and turning it upside down and crashing the community under the weight of the earth that used to be under their feet. This is as dangerous as it can get. This is not a small fit. This is not a small problem. It is much, it is much worse than spending billions or trillions of dollars to treat a group of people who to discover a remedy for what lifestyle they adapt for themselves. We need not to sit silent on this issue. At least do what Allah says. Proclaim the truth from Allah. وَقُولِ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ But our role is to proclaim the truth as we have it in the Quran and in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's all what I'm saying. We need to speak against any vice. We need not to be uh, afraid or scared to respond to the needs of our society and our community. And we need not to let things stand because this will open the doors as it actually did. That some of our young Muslim youth in our, not in this community, that I don't know that, but some of our community nationwide, even though alhamdulillah there are a few, but they are declaring themselves as part and parcel of this community. And some of them, by the way, are calling for a special place for the LGBT community in our mosques. It is one thing to adapt your own lifestyle. It is one thing to commit adultery or zina or homosexuality at your home. But it is totally another that you want the rest of the society to 
greet you with a special greeting and to treat you special treatment and you want to identify or expose your evil private life and get recognition by the public. That is unheard of. We used to know people who privately would do something bad. And it was not that bad. It was smoking. Okay, now we have some kids who are vaping. And they hide. They hide from their family. They feel ashamed to be picking a bad habit like this. We used to sell cigarettes in this country for hundreds of years without putting any label on them how harmful they are. It took the death of God knows how many millions of people for the Congress to hold a hearing with the tobacco companies and it took a year of hearing to get them to admit on the cigarette packs that you have today saying cigarette can cause very harmful diseases including cancer and even death. But our government has been collecting money on this for it, forever. Okay? We, we used to know that alcohol was prohibited in this country until 1934 when the alcohol industry they came and convinced the government now we are selling it we are making money out of it but secretly and we're making more money why don't you make it lawful and collect taxes they don't want to work under the ground and everything like this makes the fahisha and what is vice and what is wrong become publicly condoned and supported because the legal establishment are collecting money on it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our heart to the Quran and give us the courage to let the Quran speak to people. Allahumma ameen. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفوته من خلقه وحبيبه اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا Brothers and sisters I know that this subject and so many other subjects like it are not comfortable to speak about because of the fear of the reaction, the avalanche of character assassinations and everything else. But as Muslims, as believers in God, we should never fear humans. We should never even fear the jinn. Right? We should only fear Allah. فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنِي Don't fear them, fear me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so please, spread the word of Allah whenever the reality calls for it. Don't be silent when you are required to speak up. Because silence betrays your faith. Your silence could amount and could be construed as approval or else fear. If you are silenced because of fear, this contradicts your faith because fear and faith do not live in the same heart except the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all others you should fight against anything causing you fear or worries about your safety or your future or your reputation speak up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak up for the sake of your children speak up for the sake of your families Speak up for the sake of the future of religion in general and Islam in particular. Join the hands with other religious communities that are against all of these unlawful, unreligious behaviors that people want to impose on not only our entire society 
but on the whole world, despite what it is causing of harm to everybody else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to follow the truth wherever it is and to fight against vice whatever it may be. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt wa aafina fi man aafayt Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt wa aafina fi man aafayt wa tawallana fi man tawallayt wa qina wa sarif anna sharra ma qadayt Allahumma qsim lana min khashyatika ma tahulu bi baynana wa bayna ma'asiyatik wa min ta'atika ma tubalighuna bihi jannatak wa min al-yaqeen ma tuhawun bi alayna masaib al-dunya wa matti'na Allahumma bi asma'ina wa abusarina وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا وإذا أردت بقومنا فتنة فنجنا منها يا مولانا غير خزايا ولا مفتونين ولا مبدلين ولا مغيرين اللهم لا تدع لنا في يومنا هذا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا دينا إلا قضيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مبتلا إلا عافيته ولا سائلا إلا أعطيته ولا فقيرا إلا أغنيته ولا مجاهدا إلا نصرته ولا ميتا إلا رحمته أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فستذكرون ما أقول لكم وأفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وأقم الصلاة